Welcome to another episode of Anime Cons TV. My name is Doug Wilder. If those of you who have been following our podcast for a while may recall, about two years ago I did a report on the convention Star Wars celebration that was held in Orlando, Florida. Well, there was another Star Wars celebration this year. Uh, it was 2019 and it was April 11th through 15th and held in Chicago, Illinois, which interesting choice of venue. Normally it's been uh, Anaheim, California, Orlando, Florida, and in Europe as well, and this was a very different uh, location. I mentioned, you know, April 11th through 15th, which is, you know, five days for, which is kind of long for uh, some, conven by a lot of convention standards, um, especially one that's only one property, it's only Star Wars. I'll just kind of warn you guys ahead of time, I didn't get as much video for this con, uh, con report as I did for the last one, but I did get some good photos, we'll toss those in here as well. And yeah, let's just get started going into it. So, one of the good things that I'll say that the convention really pr improved on was they switched over from uh, what they had in the past for their big panels, which was line up really, really early, spend, you know, hang out overnight in an exhibit hall, uh, on the floor waiting to get into the panels in the first thing in the morning, which I think, you know, and then get in and maybe get in, but to, um, they switched from that to a lottery system where you'd apply online a couple days and they'd let you know whether or not you got accepted. So, oh, I think that's an improvement. I mean, the old system, I praised it a little because I said, you know, at least people knew what they were getting into before they did it. But it, honestly, I think it's much better that people can know in advance that they have to, they can, you know, leave the convention, go and, you know, get an actual real night's sleep in a real bed instead of spending the night on the show floor. I think that's a much better uh, thing. The one code hiccup I've really heard about that um, was a lot of people said, myself included, they're, you know, they got emails if they got accepted, you know, no problem. If they got rejected because they were sending so many of these out, for a lot of people it went straight to their spam filter, so they were just kind of wondering, and it's oh, like, oh, did you check your spam filter? Oh, yeah, I did. I didn't get in. Not not a huge deal, but something to be aware of. And maybe next time just remind people, hey, make sure you have this uh, email address that the notices will be coming from set to your safe list for your spam folder. Easy fix. Um, and they also did this for a lot of the vendor exclusive merchandise that was on the show floor for vendors, not the the show's uh, own store, which we'll get into. Another thing I'll say is was really good about this convention and anybody that's done any number of cons knows that this is a pretty big deal. Just about every single event started on time. I mean, part of that comes from the convention and having so many of these things live streamed so people around the world could watch it even if they couldn't make the convention. But that's still a pretty big deal. Um, getting things to go and start on time is no simple task. Um, even if there was a line to get in before things opened, say, you know, it opens at nine o'clock in the morning and you're you have to be in line you're in line at seven waiting for it to open when nine o'clock rolls around things open and that's that's a pretty big deal that things open when they say they are um that's no easy task some of the things on the show floor that i really liked were there was a big area for all of the costume clubs such as the five first legion the rebel legion the mandalorian mercs costume club the dark empire um, Saber Guild, I'm probably forgetting a couple of them, and I apologize to any members of those clubs, but they all had kind of, the best way I can describe it is a super booth, it was all of them in one area, they had a big kind of rotating banner up in the ceiling so you could kind of look and see where they are, and they had a lot of neat displays, um, such as uh, an E-Web, uh, which is kind of a big cannon from, uh, that the snow troopers use in Empire Strikes Back, they had that, they had something that looked like the bunker on the moon of Endor from Return of the Jedi. They And they had a lot of neat stuff there. There was a big display, it was pretty much right as you came into the show floor. 
it was a uh, design of a bunch of Lego Stormtrooper minifigures, you know, like this guy right here. Um, it was a world record display of those figures, a number of them, in a design to look like a Stormtrooper helmet. And because I got to be there kind of early enough to see it right at the start, I was there just as they were handing a um, plaque, you know, designating it a Guinness Book World Record uh, set for uh, Stormtrooper minifigures. And that was really cool. Um, there was a big banner on the show floor that was artwork of all the major entries into the franchise so far from the first movie all the way, th you know, the Clone Wars and Rebels TV show, all the way up to a little black section that was, you know, a section that was covered with a black cloth that wasn't revealed until the new movie trailer di uh, had been shown, which was a neat little tr thing to see. Um, one of my favorite booths was uh, done by the staff at uh, Rancho Obi-Wan, which we've had done a previous episode on. Uh, they brought a bunch of some of their things, and like this year they really focused on things from past Star Wars celebrations, which was really cool to see, but they also brought some of their other things, like they had to display some of the special helmets they've been given over the years. I happened to be at the booth as a new item was being presented to Steve Sansweet, who runs uh, Rancho Obi-Wan, and that was cool to see. Um, one of the things that I thought was really fun is they were, you know, they were selling some stuff, like just some merch to raise money for the store and stuff, but he, there was a new book about some of the more unusual uh, fan items that they had been donated over the years, um, and they basically, they had a thing that any purchase you make, like for a book or something, you know, you could just walk up to uh, Steve Sansley, he had a very, very small line, like maybe five people in front of me, um, and he would sign it for free, you know, as long as you bought something, which this book, which was a nice hardcover book, um, not, you know, not too thick, but it was only like $18, which for a lot of the merchandise at St Star Wars Celebration for, you know, a pretty unique item, given what else is there, that was a really good price, and being able to get it personalized for free, that to me was a really cool item, and it, it sometimes really need to say this is something a little extra special that I didn't have to pay a lot for and being able to find something like that is always a treat at a convention. So another, as I mentioned, the panels were a uh, big demand, like the big premiere panels. Uh, my girlfriend and I were lucky enough to get, uh, win the lottery and go to the episode nine panel, premiere panel, which of course amazing to be at and be in the room as the trail you know for the world premiere of the trailer um they did some really interesting stuff for line it was you know in the arena across the street from the convention center so you, you had to go outside and should as we would find you know find out chicago in mid-april is still a little chilly but for people in line they were giving away uh winter hats that had the just the episode or uh, roman numeral for nine on the you know star wars font to help people keep warm. They were also had like a, McDon a McDonald's like trailer truck set up that was just giving out Happy Meals. And these were, I kid you not, Star Wars Celebration branded Happy Meal boxes with like a, it was a, just a hamburger, not even a cheeseburger, hamburger, um, and apple slices and some fr warm fries, you know, in there and just keep people warm. But uh, the line kept moving, so you barely even needed it. But it was in still... A neat little treat and because you're going to it it adds to this experience um i will say this uh the mcs that they had working the crowds were pretty good i'm one of the most warwick davis who he just needs to be mc for everything because he's such a great host he really knows how to engage the crowd the only thing that downside i would say there is maybe avoid to all the mcs and maybe avoid you know, asking the audience trivia questions. It seems neat, but there, you get a lot of people who either get stage fright or think they're going to be clever, and it just kind of derails a little bit. But just talking to people or, like, to bring up Warwick Davis again, he just kind of responded to uh, questions that had been submitted to him with a hashtag on Twitter, and he was, he was great at that. The panel itself was phenomenal. It was neat to see uh, pictures of some of the things that they were starting to reveal. One of my favorite uh, moments of this panel, though, was 
being in the room when Kelly Marie Tran, who had been kind of bullied online for stupid reasons about The Last Jedi, she came out, she was announced, and the whole room gave her a standing ovation. And, you know, after everything she's been gone through, seeing fandom, you know, realize, hey, we're better than this. We're not these jerks. We're not the trolls on the internet. We're better than this. And be kind to her and was so meaningful. Um, and even after I was walking on the, in the halls of the convention center later on, I heard people talking about that that moment and just hearing fans say, "Yes, this is what this is how we should be representing ourselves. These are you know we're we're better than this." It was really cool, and I think this is something we need to hold on to. And I think being excellent at people, even if they are a celebrity, I think is a great thing. The one thing I'll say that was kind of a down. Um, a bit of a negative of the episode 9 panel is, so we did the lottery. Um, we were emailed a QR code for checking in to prove that we, you know, are lottery winners and stuff, and we had to either bring, you know, bring a printout or have it on our phone ready to go. Um, they never scanned it, and which is kind of weird. They <laughs> think they didn't. They looked to see if we had it, sure, but they never scanned it. And, you know, some people, I'm sure, as soon as they said, wait, they're not scanning it, could have just forwarded that email to their friend and their friend could have pulled it up on their phone and they could have easily gotten in. I don't know if that got fixed later on, but it seemed like for something that was such a big deal, they should be doing that. And I'm, I'm not sure what happened there. Um, so I mentioned exclu you know, merchandise and stuff and there's no shortage of vendors selling, you know, Star Wars everything because Star Wars is a marketing machine. But they had the lottery system first uh, some of the exclusive merch and stuff like that. Um, you know, vendors on the show floor that, you know, maybe got an agreement or just decided that, hey, we're going to unveil this new special thing or it's going to be a convention exclusive only at Celebration. We're going to uh, debut here. They did a lottery system for that. But there's also stuff that you could just find. I think the best way to approach that was don't get your hopes up. If there's something you really want, you may have to either wait in a long line because everyone else wants it, except that you just might not be able to get it. Um, some vendors just kind of, okay, everyone, the lottery's over, now it's just willy-nilly and it release, you know, release the floodgates and turns into a stampede, which is, frankly, for lack of a better word, stupid. But if you just kind of turn it into serendipity, it was really a better way to do it. A friend of mine asked if I could keep an eye out for some of this uh, celebration exclusive um, geeky tiki uh, mugs that they're doing and the way we kind of worked out is i just kept an eye out and if i saw it i text them hey i saw this one exclusive that's available right now i can grab it there's no line do you want me to pick it up and he texted me yes please pick it up and he paypal'd me right away so i wasn't having to worry about being paid back and we both knew that i wanted to never promise to him anything but other than taking a look. And it would turn it into a bit of a scavenger hunt for me, which was fun. Um, that said, then there's the issue of the Star Wars Celebration store, like the conventions store. Um, you guys might remember that when I went to it in Orlando, it was not a good experience. I spent like four hours in line uh, to do it. And... I had a little bit of better luck this year, kind of. Um, the friends that I went, went into uh, the convention with, like, okay, we said, okay, this time we're going to make a beeline straight for the store. As soon as we get in, not going to do anything else, just go. Well, we tried to do that, and we had another friend with us who went to go just get an, um, a special needs bracelet um, ahead of us, they said, we'll, we'll catch up with you later. And we said, sure, you know, no problem. They got into the convention before us. Uh, they made a beeline for the, the Celebration store. And we said, cool, we'll meet you there. Um, and then we, the, the main line finally lets in. And the line for the uh, official store has already been kept. Okay, well, what do we do now? So we text our friend what's going on. Her friend's already in there and says, yep. Yeah, um, just tell us, tell me what, tell me what you want, and I'll just take care of it. Okay, cool. That's what we'll do. And well, th 
three and a half hours later, our friend finally gets out of the show store line and has picked up everything. They, they were just having checkout issues again. So our friend just kind of kept saying, you know, do you know of anyone else that needs me to pick up stuff? What, I'm just sitting here. I can just do it. Um, so we ended up talking to a couple other friends and kept updating the list because they just were stuck in the store and just grabbing more, more things. Apparently, this is rumor mill, I don't know for sure, but apparently part of the reason the show store line was so long, slow, all the registers, which I am told is, a, I think if I remember correctly, about 25, 30 registers, uh, were all running off of the free in-house Wi-Fi in the convention center. I don't have confirmation of that, but if that's the case, that's pretty bad. And... Stuff like that, you need a designated uh, internet drop. This seems like something that should be pretty basic for a convention this size. But still, that was pretty horrific. And I passed by it a couple times and it still seemed to have a pretty slowly moving line. The only time I got on the, into the show store was on the last day of the convention, five days later. Most of, it's pretty, the, most of the merchandise is pretty well picked over. I think I got a couple other things, but... It's it's really bad, and I know again it's it's Star Wars, it's marketing machine, and all the special convention exclusive merchandise form that says you know Star Wars Celebration Chicago 2019. It's the only way to get all that stuff, but that's something that Repop fix this. I don't know how else to put. It. You guys got to really work on this, make it better, and get on that. <laughs> um. So, next up is costuming. Um, I'm, I realize I'm kind of in a weird place. You know, I'm a member of the uh, 501st Legion uh, costuming club that we do the uh, community service tonight. So, for me personally, oh, it's another Stormtrooper. Oh, it's another, you know, Vader, Darth Vader. It's another C-3PO. I've seen them before. That's kind of... I just kind of glaze over, and that's... Not to, you know, be mean to anyone who puts a lot of effort into, you know, making these costumes or, any, or anything like that. But what was always fun to me is when you see at Star Wars Celebration a really clever mashup costume. Um, somebody that does something, like, uh, we saw a bunch of people that were, like, four people that were uh, Imperial officers mashed up with the uh, Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club band. That was neat. Um, or just, there's a lot of clever mashups. Um, so many to uh, this. Um, but I'd say the, the when you see a good Star Wars costume, it's when it's something really, really, really special that you don't see often. Like, maybe only one person has ever made this costume. That's when it's really cool. Um, I, one example I'll think of is dirge from the uh, Star Wars Clone Wars uh, micro series like I saw someone as that and I just about lost my mind because it's a costume you rarely see and things like that but still if you like seeing a lot of stormtroopers and stuff like that you can definitely see that too and that's neat so I won't I don't want to discount or discredit any of these other costumes but that's something I think Again, keep an eye out for clever mashups. You're going to see a lot of neat things like that. Um, for me, and so I mentioned, you know, I'm part of the 501st Legion. One of the things that still really makes this convention neat to me is the community. This is a con that really strives on the community. I mentioned how great people were to uh, Kelly Marie Tran in the Episode 9 panel. Apparently, um, at best, also got really well treated. Um, at the 20th anniversary of uh, Phantom Menace uh, panel. But one of my favorite events, again, was the 501st Legion um, gr uh, group photo, which we didn't have as many people this time around because we had, you know, the best time we could get an open space was about 9 o'clock on Sunday morning, and some people were pretty tired of that, and it's, you know hanging out, partying, doing whatever the night before, and getting up early, and putting on white plastic armor, and getting to the convention center area and everything, is a bit of work. But it was still a really fun time, and one of my favorite memories about this 
Um, the costume I wore th this year was uh, something that I finished about a, uh, just under a year ago uh, before this convention, which was my Empire Strikes Back Snow Trooper. I, was, I said, you know what, I'm gonna, that's what I'm going to bring this year. That'll be the costume I wear for my 501st stuff. Cool. It was snowing during this photo shoot. Thankfully, it was inside, but it was snowing in April because it's still Chicago. And so uh, we had maybe about 20 of us in uh, Snow Trooper or uh, Snow Trooper related costumes for the 501st Legion. And as soon as the group, the main Legion photo uh, finished outside, we all looked and said, wait, it's snowing. Um, guys, we got to go do a detachment photo outside in the snow because when are we going to get this many of us together in the snow again? And so we did it. And, you know, Lucasfilm happened to be there, filmed us for part of the uh, Star Wars show, which was awesome. And, you know, the community about that was great because we joked, oh, someone's going to be like, oh, I don't want to mess up my weathering or something like that. No. Everyone's like, yep, we're doing this 100%, and we just booked it, and it was so funny hearing other members of the 501st Legion uh, kind of looking at us like, oh, of course, you know, yeah, there go the snowies, they're, they're going to go play in the snow, they're crazy, but it was a great photo, it's a fun memory, I'm going to look at that down the line. Of course, 501st Legion and everything, they love doing patch and coin trading, you know, so you have stuff, you know, like, you know, challenge coins that people trade things um and that again was one of my favorite events i got some really neat stuff for my own personal collection um and just talked with a lot of people i got um i met someone from another garrison that had a crocheted grand admiral thon themed loth cat which it's a very deep cut if you're not like in the thick of Star Wars, but it was really neat. And I just you know kind of said, "Hey, is that is is that an Admiral Thrawn Lothcat?" And they, uh, she told me, "Yes, it is. I'm actually selling it if you're looking for it." And I was happy to like, "Yes, please." And it was a very fair price, but it was that community again, just meeting neat people. Uh, one of the annual events you see people do is what they call the Running of the Hoods, which is the ice cream maker guy that's you know guy that's holding in cloud city and empire strikes back running and it seems like he has vital equipment and stuff but if you look closely it's just an ice cream maker and it's just anyone who wants to put on like a fake like almost like beetles wig and a mustache and a orange jumpsuit and carry right ice cream maker come on join join the fun and people do some crazy creative costumes like that like i saw one person that was instead of the guy running with the ice cream maker they were dressed up as the ice cream maker carrying the guy <laughs> just just ridiculous but a lot of fun and that's again the community makes this con a lot of fun if you get to know your fellow star wars fans and you interact with them you share fun experiences this is going to make the con a lot more fun for you um in closing i i'm just going to give a couple final thoughts which is uh, first five days is a bit lot for a, a convention, especially if you have to pay for a hotel room. Um, we were lucky enough that we had friends in Chicago that we could stay with nearby, and we just had about a 15-minute you know, uh, bus ride from our friend's apartment to the convention center, so that worked out well. Um, I think once or twice, you know, once or twice we took a lift instead of um, the bus, so it was an even shorter trip. But not everyone has that option, unfortunately. So if you're staying the entire time, it could get expensive for a hotel if you're trying to stay nearby. Um, the last day was probably the only time I got into. I actually did get into the show store on that last day, but it was still pretty picked over. And. Yeah, so it's still good stuff. Uh, one of the things that was really kind of weird to me is they said at, you know, kind of the closing, oh, well, we've got good news. There's going to be Star Wars Celebration Anaheim, California 2019. Okay, cool. What date? They haven't even, they announced that it's happening in 2019, or, I'm sorry, 2020, but they don't give us dates. That's really weird. You, I feel like you should be giving us dates right away so people can start planning and maybe there's stuff they still need to figure out but 
that strikes me as something that you should have ready to go and you can kind of guess when it's going to be given on past con uh, celebrations but tell us you know tell us right away even if we can't book a hotel room yet or book flights yet or order a badge yet we that that's fine but at least give us the dates as you're if you're announcing the event so we can start planning so that's about it star wars celebration is a great con for community so so con uh for uh special merchandise and a weird con for um lessons that a convention organizer should know better about but i would i wouldn't say avoid it i'd just say manage your expectations know what you're getting into and celebrate your fellow fans and celebrate the community and if you share a good time with uh, other people it's going to make your time even better too so if you are going to star wars celebration have any questions about it or if you're going to any other convention don't forget to drop us a line you can leave us a voicemail at 762 adequate send us an email at podcast at animecons.tv we're also on twitter tumblr instagram all over the place look up animecons.tv you'll find ways to reach out to us um i still post every now and then on my personal uh twitter account when i'm watching new anime which is at nigoki watches so i'm doug wilder we'll see you again soon <laughs>